Poor Murata, man. That dude hasn't been able to catch a break. VAR giveth and VAR taketh away. Hey, how are you? My name's Adrian, and this is Rona TV's recap of everything that happened this week in the Champions League. The second half of the groups finally got to play, so let's get to it. Starting with Tuesday's matches. All right, so moving on to Wednesday now. I'm joking, but seriously, there was a whole lot of nothing going on in Tuesday's matches, except for defensive masterclasses, that or disjointed attacks. Barcelona went away to Lyon, and the home side had the better of starts as they latched onto a wayward ball by Ter Stegen, and Fakir tested the keeper, but did well to get down there. Then, just four minutes later, Terrier hit the bar, and at this point, you'd be excused for saying, oh baby. We've got a banger on our hands, but alas, we didn't get that. We got a nil-nil, so unless you call a nil-nil match a banger, you'd be sadly disappointed, like me. I gotta fix my lights here on the fly. You guys are getting to see the behind the scenes shit. Looking a little dark. Looking a little dark. Although I, I could use with looking a little darker. Complexion is white as the snow outside. It's depressing, man. We get like an hour of sunlight. It's like living in Iceland. But anyways, from that flurry early on, Lyon only got three more shots in the entirety of the match, none of which made it on target. Barcelona, on the other hand, and I think this illustrates this match quite well, they launched over 20 attempts towards goal, but they were either blocked or denied by man of the match Anthony Lopes, or Lopez if the Spanish pronunciation of his Portuguese name is more your style. Like people in the comments section like to tell me all the time, LOL, it's Lopez. More like LOL. Yeah, I'm this petty. <laughs> but seriously, Lyon were lucky to get out of this one alive. Perhaps lucky is the wrong word, as it discredits the defenders who put their lives on the line and Antonio Lopez in goal. <laughs> and Barca will be going back to the Camp Nou confident that they have the know-how to bring Lyon down, but they may be stressing about not getting that away goal, because you can picture Lyon getting one. Just a vibe I'm getting. Also, their fans may be stressing about the fact that they've had such a hard time scoring in their last five games. Only four goals in that stretch, and four draws, and one win. In the other match from Tuesday, Klopp linked up with his old nemesis, FC Bayern, to give them the what for, which would be the first time that Liverpool has beaten Bayern since the last time they played in 2001. Now, going into this one, there was some cause for concern in each team's back line, but with Liverpool having to start Fabinho and Joel Matip back there, Bayern basically had no right to be nervous with their two natural centre-backs in Hummels and Sula. In fact, they both shined in this match. Hummels in particular was an absolute octopus, man. The amount of passes he cut out with massive lunges for the ball was insane. That's not to say that they didn't give up a single opportunity, because they did, like Salah's early chance in the 11th minute from an incredible ball over the top by Henderson. Or there were the numerous chances that Sadio Mane blew, and man, is that guy ever frustrating to watch this season? I feel like numerous matches, sorry to say numerous again, the one against Napoli comes to mind, for example, he's just been on an absolute sitter-missing tear. But it wasn't just Sula and Hummels that had strong showings, as Kimmich, a man possessed out there, had an absolute blinder, but it's too bad for him he'll be suspended for the next game. Conversely, I thought that Liverpool's defense was a little loosey-goosey on the ball, Alisson the prime suspect here, but I mean, ultimately, they didn't end up conceding a goal, so how much can I really criticize them, especially when they were playing with Fabinho, a CDM, as a center back. So, same situation as the Barca Lyon tie, as Bayern have to now just go home and win. If Liverpool get a goal there, I smell trouble. If this was Liverpool from last season, good luck keeping them off the score sheet. But this season, with how terrible their away form has been in the Champions League, Bayern could take this thing. I don't know who's the favorite anymore though. That's very murky now. All right, that's finished then. Let's move on to Wednesday's matches because those were entertaining. First up, we have Manchester City versus VAR. I mean, against Schalke. Wow, what a match this was with Schalke trying to snuff City out with their narrow 5-3-2 Nagelsmann style formation. City found their first goal in a somewhat controversial fashion, at least if you ask some Schalke fans, as Mark Ut went down following an aerial duel with Laporte, City continued up the field, gave up possession, but Sané, the Schalke center back, not City winger, Sané lingered on the ball and gave up possession to David Silva, who squared for Aguero to finish into an almost vacant goal and let the whistles and boos rain in. Here's where it got fun, however, following this goal. 
Calogiori cut in from the right and struck towards goal, which hit Otamendi's arm in the process. Now, this is where the handball rule needs to be cleared up a bit, because nobody can seem to agree on this penalty call. Some say that it should be given because his arm stopped a ball that was heading towards goal, but if you look at the angle from behind, you can see that he tried to pull his arm away. So in that sense, it seems a little bit harsh. Harsh or not, what felt like a lifetime later due to the review monitor not working for the referee, the referee awarded the pen and a yellow to Otamendi, which is a bit harsh in my opinion and will come up later, and Bentaleb converted coolly, 1-1. Then Schalke were awarded a second pen, which was awarded just before the half and was much more cut and dry as Fernandinho, I think, I think he was trying to mount Sané, guys. Whatever he was doing, he got a yellow also and Bentaleb converted that penalty also. 2-1 Schalke and after the break, it only went and got worse for City as Otamendi grabbed a second yellow and was given his marching orders. Deserved yellow for that, by the way. That was probably good for City in the end as with the introduction of Leroy Sané in the 78th minute, all the pieces were in place for the epic turnaround. First, there was the free kick in the 85th minute from what looked like 25, 30 yards out. Sané, Leroy this time, lashed it. Absolutely lashed it perfectly as the ball whipped up and dipped down into the top corner, off the frame and in. Pinche golazo. Then there was the incredible ball forward in the 90th minute by none other than my man Ederson in goal. Oh, miss him at Benfica. Although we're fine, goalkeeper wise. But from that ball forward, before I got sidetracked, Ozipka completely misjudged it, and Sterling was there to slot the ball past Farman, who was in no man's land, basically. Whack positioning and decision making from him there. Sterling shouldn't be able to side foot the ball with his right foot from the right into the net like that. So City pull it out. They managed to come through some adversity and get a win away to Schalke. And you can't see Schalke coming back from this, can you? I mean, I think my prediction was 6-1 or 6-2 and it's looking decent at the moment, or at least plausible, that's for sure. Regardless, I think that City's got this in the bag. Speaking of looking decent, whew, Atletico man, damn. In the first half, Juve looked a little more threatening with their most dangerous attempt, no doubt, when Cristiano Ronaldo launched a free kick against the, no, not against the wall, from Leroy Sané range, and Oblak did incredibly well to stop it. The strike was a little bit down the middle than he probably would have liked, but take nothing away from Oblak. Incredible keeper. Then the Chilio was guilty of tripping up Diego Costa just outside of the box, and despite the referee getting it wrong and awarding a penalty, VAR got it right and gave a free kick, which Griezmann almost bamboozled Chesney with the big pole making the save. Right after the half, Diego Costa should have made it 1-0 when he was in clear, but the two months off reared its ugly head and he completely scuffed it, despite Chesney being beaten completely. <laughs> Minutes later, and Chesney was the hero as Griezmann's attempted dink over his head was palmed off of the crossbar. It was all Atletico from here, basically. As Juve's defense started to show signs of weakness, and it finally cracked when Alvar, oh Morata, foreshadowing, beat Chiellini to the ball and headed past his old team. But of course, this is Morata we're talking about, a Greek tragedy of a football player, and the goal was taken away from him because the referee deemed this to be a foul. Personally, if that's considered a foul, then that's as soft as they come, as Chiellini was going down before the contact was even made, but it didn't matter in the end because the right team won. Will it matter? Going into the second leg, will that goal be important? We'll see. Atletico got their breakthrough via Jimenez thanks to a scrambler of a corner kick that saw bodies on the floor and a swept finish by the center back. Then, once again, set pieces were Juve's undoing as Diego Godin volleyed the second ball in and gave a kiss to Ronaldo's abs on the way. The ball gave a kiss to the abs, not Godin. So, as I just said, the right team won here, as most Juve fans, from what I've read and listened to, all agree that their team was pretty crap on the day. And given that pretty much the reason for bringing in Ronaldo is to win the Champions League, to take that final step, this isn't how you want to get things kicked off in your march towards the finals. The counter-attacking from Atletico in the second half cut them open time and time again. De Chilio at right back was a completely whack move, as Juan Cancelo adds much more in my opinion going forward, and he would have done just as well as De Chilio defensively today, if not maybe better. But that being said, no matter who was playing right back, they wouldn't have stopped any of these goals, except for maybe the one that was disallowed as the cross came in from the left. So, no away goal for Juve, which is very scary when you lose your first match by two. Why? Because that means that Juve will really have to go at Atleti in the second leg and could leave themselves exposed at times when they push for a goal. That would really suit Atleti, a team that just adores defending, and you add to the fact that 
Juve were undone a good few times on the counter, and Atleti fans have got to feel confident going into the second leg, as they should, by the way, especially with how they played in that second half. Of course, though, you cannot, cannot ever count Juve out, especially when they have Cristiano Ronaldo in their ranks, a guy who loves a challenge and loves the Champions League even more. Plus, look at what Juve did in Madrid last season with that three-goal comeback. As the club motto goes, Finolino alla fina fine. Just a quick disclaimer here to clear things up because I know that joke will have flown over some people's heads and they would leave a LOL, dumb yank can't pronounce fino alla fine, which is funny in itself because I'm not American, but it's easily the most common insult from people on YouTube towards me. Anyway, yeah, that was a joke. Really looking forward to that second leg between Juve and Atletico, even though it has the potential to be unwatchable if Atletico go full Atletico. So, which second leg are you looking forward to the most? Also, weigh in in the comments on whether you think VAR got the decisions right this time around. I'm Adrian, smash like if you liked or dislike if you disliked, and take care. Bye.